Hey people, how are you? My name is Makeda Valletta, also known as The Body Scientist. And um, I am reporting live from Chicago. If you aren't familiar with me, I have a background in exercise and sports science and nutrition science. However, my approach to holistic health is one of, I'm, I'm into the science, but I'm into indigenous science first, okay? Um, pre-colonial science. So I always say that Western science doesn't confirm anything that indigenous people did not already know, okay? So I'm just gonna start with that. Um, so I've done a few, if you, if you follow my work, you uh, may have seen a few videos that I've done about vitamin D. If you have not seen those videos, I highly suggest you take a look at them. There's at least two of them. Um, on my YouTube page, I'll post them below. Um, and I post, you know, you also have clips on my IG page, but they're on my YouTube page, The Body Scientist 81. Um, and so there's a lot of myths about vitamin D. And it's funny because vitamin D has been a huge, um, sorry, the, the camera is shaking because I'm holding onto it in my hand. Um, vitamin D has been in the news a lot since COVID. And a lot of what people say about vitamin D is actually incorrect. So a lot of people will say, oh, we can get vitamin D from the sun. And I, and I, I talk about this more in depth in my other videos, so definitely check them out. I'm going to brush over it right now. But the fact of the matter is, to make it very brief, you could only get vitamin D from the sun during a few months out of the year, depending on where you live. So, you know, I'm in Chicago, I'm from New York. In cities like that, you can only get, or you know, vitamin D from the sun from like the end of April to like the end of September or something like that, right? Probably less than that in, in, in uh, London, right? Um, but even if you live like in Florida or in the Caribbean, um, most people are walking around with too much clothes to get enough vitamin D from the sun, okay? Because the more melanin that you have, the more sunlight you need to get your vitamin D from the sun. So if somebody is very pale skinned or fair skinned, they might, in this kind of sun, maybe 20 minutes is enough for them. But somebody, ooh, my complexion or, or um, darker might need a few hours, right? And, um, and you need to get the sun when the sun is right above, during the hottest times of the day, which is from 10 a.m. to about 2 p.m., okay? So if you're out at like 7, 8 in the morning, no. If it's 6, 7 in the evening, no, okay? Also, you need as much of your skin as possible exposed to the sun. So if you have on pants and a t-shirt and all you have is like your forearms, you know, and your face being exposed and maybe a little bit of your shins, that's not enough skin. So remember what I said about indigenous science. If you look at all the places in the world where there are melanated people, so that's Africa, that's South America, that's the Caribbean, that's the Polynesian Islands, um, Australia, um, Southeast Asia, right? Prior to colonization, those people were walking around naked, okay? They really didn't have any clothes on. The women were topless, the breasts were out, the nipples were out. You know, a lot of times, you know, people just had something, some, you know, some band or, or something around their waist, right? The colonizers said that was indecent, okay? It made people put on more clothes. Vitamin D deficiencies is a problem in the world, okay? Look it up, vitamin D and vitamin A. Both worldwide deficiencies. The whole planet has a problem with it in both fair-skinned people and melanated-skinned people, right? But when you, when you have melanin, the people who have with melanin have even worse vitamin D deficiencies. Almost every person I know that has melanin that gets the vitamin D check tells me that it's very low. Because like, and I've traveled a lot to Cuba, Colombia, to Mexico, you know, Haiti, and all those places. And I've never been to Africa, but I heard it's the same way. And all those places, people wear a lot of clothes. Like they be wearing more clothes than, right now I'm in Chicago, everybody has on shorts and t-shirts and tank tops. When I go to those countries, people have on pants or long sleeve shirts. When it's like 95 degrees, 90 degrees and sunny, they cover up completely. Like in ways that I can't even understand how they could do that. I've been to Cuba five times, hard as hell. Hot as hell in Santiago. Hot as hell in Cartagena, Colombia. Cartagena is one of the hottest damn places I've ever been. And people are walking around with tight jeans and long sleeve shirts. And I'm like, I would pass out doing that. 
but because of acclimation, we get acclimated to our environment. So for somebody who's not from there, we are like super hot, even in New Orleans. Okay, New Orleans is also one of the hottest places. Between New Orleans and Cartagena, I don't know which is worse, right? But New Orleans is like death hot. And a lot of people who are from there be walking around with long sleeve shirts and pants. Hold on. And um, I could never do that, right? But it's just like how, you know, living, being from New York and living in Chicago, the winter is not that bad to me. I just put on winter clothes and keep it moving. Like when people will be complaining, oh, the cold, the cold, not that serious. I moisturize, put on my clothes, and keep it moving, walk fast, and I'm, I'm always warm. So there's only a few days out the winter where I'm really cold. But again, that's about acclimation, right? So, so with that being said, the people who live in these hot places, even people in Miami, people I know, they're always in their car, then they're inside, the air conditioning. So people aren't really out in the elements getting sun on their skin anyway, right? Especially melanated people, which is even more, like, a, like I said, a fair-skinned person could be fine just with 10, 20 minutes. Now, sunscreen is bad. Sunscreen is bad for everybody, okay? Because sunscreen, first of all, there's chemicals in sunscreen that are, all, that are highly cancer causing. Just look them up. Take a bottle of sunscreen, Google and research the ingredients that are in those sunscreens. They're all cancer causing. Our skin is very absorbent. We shouldn't put anything on our skin that we cannot ingest. So if you can't, if it says to call the poison control hotline, you shouldn't be putting it on your skin, right? So if you're trying to prevent cancer by using sunscreen, why would you slather a bunch of cancer-causing chemicals onto your skin for your skin to absorb? Just think about that. In Mexico, when you go to, to the cenotes, they don't allow you to wear sunscreen because they know you're going to poison the water and the life in the water. So not only is wearing chemical sunscreen bad for you, it's bad for the environment. Now, if you're fair skin and you can't take a lot of sun, you go to vacation in Jamaica or Miami and you don't want to get sunburned, the answer for you is to moisturize your skin with protective and nourishing fats, saturated fats like tallow, like shea butter, like coconut oil, right? And just stay in the sun for the small amount of time that you can stay in the sun. If it's 10 minutes before you get burnt, that's what it is. You don't want to extend that time because melanin also protects the body from the folate being. Melanin makes it harder to absorb vitamin D, but it also protects you. So let me, let me, let me say it this way. The sun destroys our folate, right, which is a B vitamin, which is necessary for cellular reproduction and reproduction of DNA in our cells. The sun destroys it. So when you have, for depending on the color of your skin, you know, when you have too much sun, which how much is too much depends on the color of your skin, and you start to burn, when you start to burn, that's not good. Burning is saying that genetic damage is happening, okay? You have been in the sun too long. And when you exceed the amount of time that, of sun that you need, then you're destroying your folate. So you don't want to do that. Also, UV rays um, is how we, we, have, we make vitamin D from UV rays and cholesterol, from the UV rays hitting our skin and interacting with cholesterol. So you need to have enough cholesterol on your diet to make vitamin D, because vitamin D is really like a hormone. And all of our hormones, actually technically it is a hormone, and all hormones are made from cholesterol. But it's the combination of the UV rays and cholesterol. So if you are wearing sunscreen and you're blocking the UV rays, guess what? You can't make vitamin D. It's, the camera's getting so dark because of the sun. So yeah, so those are the reasons why you don't want to use sunscreen no matter what complexion you are. Now, what I have on my skin right now is one of the skin mixtures that I make that has cocoa butter, coconut oil, and tallow, and a little bit of castor oil, right? Um, I would never just put castor oil on my skin. It's too thick. It's also not a saturated fat. You want to have saturated fats. I don't use shea butter in the heat because shea butter is an insulator. It makes me too damn hot. But if you want to use it, go ahead. It's just too hot for me. I use shea butter in the winter, right? But it's saturated fats that are the most stable. I also have videos where I talk about fats as well. So when you, whenever heat, light, and air are being applied to a fat, saturated fats are the most stable. The more unsaturated fat is, the more unstable it is when heat, light, and air are applied to it. So you don't want to put polyunsaturated fats, even monounsaturated fats like olive oil. I mean, olive oil is okay. Um, but it's not the best thing to put on when you're going to be out in the sun. So cocoa butter, all these bugs.
Cocoa butter is an excellent one um, that I like for the sun. It's excellent if you've got sunburn. Coconut oil is cool, but I think cocoa butter is more deeply moisturizing, okay? I also have another skin mixture that has cocoa butter, ghee, palm oil. And those are all saturated fats. Um, and so, yeah, you want to protect your skin and nourish your skin with the right fats, okay? But separate from the vitamin D, the sun has so many other health properties that indigenous people clearly understood, which is why they were always in the sun. They were outside getting fresh air, okay? And um, so wherever you live, if it's hot and sunny right now, ooh, this kid sprinkled me with water. Um, Ooh. Like I said, I'm in um, Chicago right now at Lake Michigan. Looks like the beach, right? Hold on, let me, let me put my camera. I can't see. Yeah. I'm sitting out here right now. So, like, a lot of times, you know, in the summertime, I have to make myself come outside and find a reason to be outside. You know, um, luckily I work for myself. So, um, I can make my own schedule, but you know, I don't, it's hard to get work done outside because like right now, the sun is so strong, I can't even see the screen, it's all dark, so I can't be out here doing work on my computer and stuff. But I really try to make a concerted effort to get in the sun, and this is the reason why it's so bad to live, um, you know, people who are driving all the time. I don't want to just say suburban people, because a lot of people in the city also drive all the time. And you're always in your car. I like to be able to walk, because just walking around running errands, I'm getting sun on my skin. You, if the sun is coming through glass, whether it's your glass in the, your car, the glass in your office, in your house, cannot make vitamin D from that sun. You need direct sunlight on your skin. Okay? So that's my quick little video for today, but definitely take a closer look at the two videos I've done about vitamin D where I go more in depth so you can learn and understand more. Okay, people. Um, so have a great day, and if you're someplace where it's sunny, try to get outside, get as much of your skin exposed to the sun as possible, especially if you have melanin. All right. <laughs> Bye, people.